wrong. Now you must decide my fate. You are kind, but I can never be free again. Ask the creaking ones at that time. The sails of Majesty. Of course. The ship's awake. Good. Is she ready to sail? A slow, toothless smile stretches across her face. To driftwood, then. It most certainly is. Forward. With the sun on their backs and the wind in their sails, the god woke and watched Fort Joy shrink behind them. of the Lady Vengeance had not gone unnoticed. I respect your metal, Sorceress. We are ready, Mistress. Yes, but are they? I swear, Mistress. I swear they'll perform admirably. <laughs> Very well. Show me. Goodbye, sorcerers. This is my ship. I won't see it taken from under my feet. You, act! Oh, for the love of the void. Listen up. We can't win this one, but I can get us to safety. You need to buy me time. Show us what you can do, Godwoken. Godwoken? Parasites, rather. I'll take care of it, mistress.
again, Dallas.
with the help of the half-demon Malady. The Godwoken escaped through the veil that separates life from death. The air here has a familiar smell, like the place you grew up. Old memories begin to well within you, but the sweet sour smell of decay suddenly punctures them. A faint creaking sounds in the distance. Is that a tree? What's hanging from it? Must be a way across. Relic. The gods. Are they dead? How can this be? Before you hangs a great ethereal orc, his face twisted in a knot of pain as cursed tendrils constrict him. Ever tightening cursed branches constrict the great dwarven god Duna. His eyelids flutter and his face bluish and bloated nods. Tight coils wrap Tyr Sendelius from head to foot. His still face is set to a glowering sneer. Tight coils wrap. Amadia hangs before you, her face cut and bruised, her chest barely moving. You think you see a tear run down her cheek. You lean in. That's no tear. It's source. The shimmering liquid is seeping from her wounds and dripping to the ground below her. Ralik hangs limp from the tree, cursed branches constricting him, snake-like from foot to shoulders. His helmeted head hangs slack at his side but a barely audible wheeze rasps from his lips. If an... hurry! Cursed tendrils tighten around Zolstissa. Her lips are moving, but no words seem able to escape her lips. A small, stout imp... As the cursed branches slither away from Ralik, he raises his head. Green eyes glint with sudden fire from behind his helmet. Are we the first? The others, do they hang still upon the tree? He strains at the ethereal ropes that bind him, resisting their grip. You must make haste! I am bound, but not defeated! Not yet! This is not the work of fate. It is the work of the Void. It will come for our people. It will destroy us all. You are my chosen. Now you must become the champion of our kind. The champion of humanity. I have survived our enemies. You must do more than that. You cannot comprehend what it is, but you know full well what it wants. The Void will not stop until it has devoured us all. It thinks it has defeated me, defeated all the gods. But it underestimates human might. Your might, Ifan Ben Mezd. Slayer of Black Ring, Silver Claw, Champion of Relic. His eyes flash bright green. He struggles against his binds, to no avail. You will show it. You will show them all. You have already unleashed some of the powers locked within you. But there is a great well of possibility still untapped. You cannot stop until you ascend to the highest heights of your power. You cannot stop until you become divine. Like Lucian, 
you will be called to unite the powers of the Seven against the Void. Like Lucian, you will lead our proud people to preeminence. But unlike Lucian, your weakness will not lead you to foolish failure. He opens his mouth to respond, but stops and tilts his head, listening for something you cannot detect. I hear the Void. I hear it calling. I hear it laughing. It, it's coming. It's here. If it finds you here... Ralik's face twists in fear. He opens his mouth as if to scream, but no sound comes out. White hot cold pierces your heart like a blade. You are frozen to the spot. The burning cold pumps through you like a curse, and then... What's happened here? Where is everyone? Well, at least they added a shrub to the ghastly place. I'm not sure, Quercus. I rather liked the tree's ornaments. if you wish to. Ha! <laughs> People will enslave anything these days. At least back in my day, they had the elegance to opt for an elf. Home? There's no such thing. I hail from the land that was. The Kingdom of Fog. The Grave of Divinity. If ever I had a home, it has long since gone up in the smoke of death fog, along with so many elves. So, no home, except everywhere, really. <laughs> the world is mine. It's mine because I say it is. She looks at you expectantly. Yes. You may bow before the Queen of the World. We, the Queen of the World, smile upon thee with favor. We dub thee Knight of the Needle. Arise, good sir, and wear your title proudly. She takes you by the hands and laughs heartily as you stand up. <laughs> How kind of you to play along. We won't forget. What I have seen is a cautionary tale. The world needs a divine, I grant you that, but look at what a god may be reduced to. A soul aquiver with fear. Lost, alone, and forsaken. What use Fort Joy had has been spent. New hunting grounds wait across the sea, so by all means, let us sail. Oh! Hey! You know, wherever the next road leads, I guess. I never was one to sit in one place too long. How about you? You missing home by now? I hear you. I've always kind of felt like... Like home isn't really a place, or a time, or anything like that. It's just a feeling you get. It's all in the mind. I think as long as I might lose myself at any moment, I'll feel like a bit of a stranger, no matter where I go. That does help. Thanks, Chief. Sure thing, Chief. What's up? One of the gods? Really? Well, look at you go. What did they say?
One of the gods said that. Losa huffs on her fingernails and buffs them on her tunic, smirking. Nice. So what? You gonna neutralize the threat? Shuck off the liability? No better time than the present, Chief. Tell me what you want to do. Right. I'll be doing the same. Lead the way. I've been sailing for a long time, but I don't know if I've ever seen so much drama. Not enough. I... I don't know. I've never been one for worshipping. I always figured if Duna really existed, he'd show himself. I mean, am I really supposed to ask some invisible dwarf in the sky to grant world peace? Or give me a pony? Yeah, it sounded like a waste of time to me. But, uh... Then he showed himself. Yes. Is it an audience you deserve? It was all a bit ominous, wasn't it? With the divine dead and divinity itself dying. It seems we have no choice but to venture forth and, for lack of a better phrase, save the world. Bit of a bother, if you ask me. I had other plans. It Faye nods as you approach. He seems unusually quiet. I must admit, I'm more worried than I was. I thought this would be a slice of cake, to be quite honest. After all, I am an energetic, fresh-faced skeleton, teaming up with the lady-turned-goddess Armadia. What force could stop two Eternals? Whatever form this void takes, it seems significantly more dangerous than I assumed. I... I don't know. But after everything that's happened, we should not be here. This place feels like the echo of an eternal land. And here, in their own land, something tried to hang the Seven. It's sacrilege at best, and I do not... in a single moment. But others still draw breath. They are sheltering below decks.
Where have you been? I can't keep this up much longer. We need to go. There's no time. I can't hold us here. Brace yourself. This might hurt a lot. <laughs> The chill of the Hall of Echoes clung to the Lady Vengeance as it returned to the shores of Reaper's Coast. The Godwoken were alive, but what of the gods? Solid ground materializes beneath your feet. Your weight falls back into your body all at once, and bright sunlight stings your eyes. As your eyes adjust, you realize you're still aboard the Lady Vengeance. A gust of fresh sea air caresses you, and warm sunshine prickles your skin. <coughs> One moment, please. <coughs> Melody explodes in a fit of retching that racks her body. At last, she sneezes and expels a glob of something shiny and silver onto the deck. It wriggles quickly off the siding and plummets into the sea with a splash. Ah. Better. Let's not do that again any time soon, hmm? Well, we needed to escape, didn't we? So I took us the one place I was quite certain Dallas couldn't follow. I suppose you recognized the Hall of Echoes from those visions you'd had before. Realm of the Dead, Realm of Divinity. I do hope you learned something useful on our little field trip. Desperate how? I see. So, your god seemed uncharacteristically frightened, told you the Void was coming, and that only you could ascend to Divinity, after which you felt a cold deep within you. Well then, it sounds like you need to ascend, doesn't it? And quickly. She inspects her fingernails with great attention, then looks up at you from under an arched eyebrow. Did they mention how you were meant to become the next divine? Oh, what confidence you inspire. Luckily for you, Mama Malady is here to help. We already know you can bless, but as far as I know, you can neither see source nor take it as you see fit. I may not know much about divinity, but I do know that any god woken worth their salt will know how to perform all these hoes of fantastic feats. You need to go see the Meister. Oh, she's got one of those things in Driftwood, you know, the building where people go and they do things inside of it. Uh, a home, that's it. She's got a home in Driftwood. Give me your map. There you are. Tell her I sent you and she'll handle the rest. You're at the beginning of a long journey, Godwoken. Long, but exceedingly interesting. Now, I must be going, and so must you. Shopping. Why, our faithful little sloop, of course. We can all ride together. Won't that be... Before you go, if I'm not back by the time you find out where our journey takes us next, you can call me back here. Tell the ship. She'll know how to summon me. And in the unlikely case you don't manage to do whatever it is you'll need to do to become what you need to become, you could call me. But I would be grateful if it doesn't come to that. Nowhere safe! Red-robed lunatics at sea, those void-woken seedlings in the swamp, it all points to the great acorn. It's coming, Quarkus! What if it's too late, hmm? What if the Knights of Dre are too far ahead in their plans? 
At least here, our shield's ignorance can be forgiven, Quercus. The Knights of Dre do not go out of their way to boast about their existence. You know their order, my friend. Mystic Squirrel Knights, sworn to the Great Acorn, trying to bring about its return. The squirrel absent-mindedly runs a paw over Quercus's spine. The air fills with the sound of soft, dusty purring. They plan to inherit the everlasting forest once the acorn drops and the world is rid of all giants. They believe that only the arboreal will and should survive. I... I don't know. I am trying, of course. But how does one battle a power like the Great Acorn? The Knights of Dre are a dangerous, dangerous order. Lunatics! A single-minded devotion to bringing about the end of the world. Together, Quercus, we can develop some magic to save us from the Great Acorn, if our shield can keep us alive. Yes, yes, it has done an admirable job so far. It certainly lasted longer than I thought it would. But does it understand that we could be wiped out at any moment? Does it understand the risk? Huh. Trust. Do you remember trust, Quercus? I'm not sure I do. Well, yes, of course I trust you, Quercus. You're different. But perhaps we should show a little faith in our shield, too. The squirrel reaches out and touches your ankle, sending a hot flush rippling through your body. Your mind's eye sees new potential spells swirling before it. Now, oh, listen carefully, shield. The plan is thus. Do not die. If the shield can hold up its end of the bargain, we might just have a chance to complete our research. We might make it yet, Quercus. Plenty of fighters for hire. Experts in blades, bows, and bewitchment. Oh, I see you have a full contingent already. Then I'll leave you be. Hail, friend. And remember, in Lucian's love there could be no wrong.
expert warriors for hire, all seasoned in combat. They won't let you down. I expect Malady has an answer to that. It seems she's got it all in hand. Paradise awaits, my friend. Not an actual paradise, of course. I don't think there's such a place in all of Rivalon. Paradise Downs. My parents still sow the soil there. And if the Order hadn't called me to its ranks, I'd still call their farm my home. I miss it. I miss them. They've been forever understanding of my duty. But I admit, I've been neglectful. I have some wrongs to right. You are either naive or ignorant, Godwoken. Lucian overcame the demon of lies to become our savior, our father of truth. Malice is, was not in his nature. Gareth relaxes, inhale, exhale, his voice dim. It's only human to question, but you must also find your way back, not just for you, but for everyone that relies on you. In those moments of doubt, I remember not what Lucian said, but what he did. When the Black Ring rose up, he stood for the defenseless. For all of us. For my mother. My father. Gareth's nostalgia lasts for just a moment longer. He composes himself, clears his throat, and waits for your next question. Hello again. That's twice now you've saved my skin. And I think it's time to start repaying the favours. I could fetch some stuff you need, maybe. Ma always said I was a great runner. Sure thing. I'll start hunting that down right away. Don't wait up. Fighters, mages, archers, all willing to fight by your side if the price is right.
As you approach, the silent monk puff. The silent monk cocks his right ear. Thank you. 